from friends and neighbors? Absolutely not. You know, I believe the harvest, you know, the Word of God says, again, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. In approaching, you know, your Muslim neighbor, he could be another Kamal. And he could he 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 may come to know what is the true living God is all about and how much God loves him that he doesn't want him to die and offer his blood as a sacrifice for God but God offered his blood for him mm-hmm. and so therefore our approach is truly we intimidate the darkness the power of darkness and we bring the order of the light and the love of God into their life. Wow. Well, you're listening to today's issues on American Family Radio. Our guest is Kamel Salim with Coom Ministries, K-O-O-M-E, ministries.com. Uh, to find out information on how you might bring Kamel to your community, to your church, uh, and also to perhaps synagogues. And, you know, we have a, a quite a cross-section of the country that listens to us. I'm, I'm amazed sometimes that... But when I say, well, why would you even mention synagogues on AFR? Well, because we have a lot of Jewish friends who listen. And Kamel's available to come and and speak to them as well. And you can find out all the information you need to know about how Mm -hmm. to contact him at Coom, K-O-O-M-E, CoomMinistries.com. Let's go to Oklahoma City and talk with Larry. Larry, thanks for calling today's issues. Yes, thank you, gentlemen, for a wonderful show. I appreciate you very much every day. We pray for you. And well, Paul, I want to thank you because I feel like you put yourself in a very uh, troubling position by uh, first becoming a Christian and then witnessing. And um, but you you kind of uh, steered into my question a little bit when you said that Muslims have no salvation. That even the Quran says that they have to go to hell first. What kind of success would I have if I were to give Bibles? To believing uh, Muslims, uh, is there danger there? Is it good? Will they read it? Can, and I'd like to get your answer uh, uh, off the air here. Thank you, very Larry. Much. That's a great question. We'll let you listen to the answer on the radio. Come on. Absolutely. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong in giving the Bible uh, to a Muslim uh, because Islam in the Quranic uh, in the Quran it says that Islam must honor and respect all other religion. Of course, that is for uh, in the first coming of Muhammad when he came to Mecca, you know, which is everything was peaceful. But when he went to Medina, you know, there it says destroy the Christian and the Jews, which is it became, you know, the theology changed and became the abrogation took place, you know. So, but many Muslims today, they don't care for the abrogation because they don't want to be a radi- radical. So therefore, give them a gift. Uh, as a Bible, it's, an, it's a great idea because they respect the Bible, but nevertheless, the greatest gift that you can give them is you, who you are the living Word of God that can mm. walk before them and show them the true heart of God. And uh, because our Christianity is going to really avail and show us the truth about who we are and what we are by showing them the love of God and the truth of God and what can God do for them and by praying for them and they start seeing miracle and hearing the voice of God and having dreams and visions as we see in this phenomena happen all over the world uh, in the Muslim world now and they having dreams and visions uh, because the Christian people are praying for them and approaching them and uh, touching them and showing them who is truly Jesus Christ, not just by giving the word, but speaking to the, the word in their life and allow them to know who is Christ in truth. Okay. You're listening to today's issues on American Family Radio, and we go to James calling from Lafayette, Louisiana. James, welcome to today's issues. What's your question or comment? Uh, comment is I have a friend, and I'm not going to elaborate on it, who wrote a book about Jewish correction about Muslim and Christian relationships. It's a novel based on fact, and the author's pen name is Jim Baton, and the title is Someone Has to Die. It's the story of two families, one Muslim, one Christian, and their relationships and how they build their relationship to uh, bring... Okay, do you have a question for Kamal? Uh, No, I just had that one comment. All right. Thank you for calling, then. We appreciate it. And 
we go now to Kosciuszko, Kasiask- pardon me, to Virginia, and Stacy's calling on her cell phone. Stacy, welcome to today's issues. Yes, thank you for taking my call. Can you understand me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, the reason I have because I'm on a Bluetooth and I'm a truck driver uh, right now. I'm in uh, Petersburg, Virginia, and uh, my question is, and one well, one question is uh, uh, in relationship to the uh, earlier caller or, or uh, when it was explained uh, about Mecca and then uh, Medina? Medina? Uh, yeah, is, is that in reference, is it safe to say, is that in reference, uh, one second please, I'm here to pick up an empty. <laughs> All right. Stacy is on the job. We can hear yeah, that. We can hear that. Kamal, would you respond to the first part of that question for him? It was coming a weak signal for me to hear it. So the question is, what's the difference between the Mecca and Medina? Is that what the question yeah, was? Yeah, I believe he was asking about the difference in the perhaps the holy place and uh, being Mecca, and then what was, what was the transition to Medina? Okay. Uh, well, Muhammad uh, came with the message, you know, and uh, it came to him in Mecca, you know, and uh, he had an encounter with the angel of light, uh, and he didn't know who the angel was, but uh, nevertheless, the message was, uh, you know, was peaceful. And he tried to be more like uh, the Jewish prophets and like Christ, you know, in many different ways. And what happened is uh, the Croatian tribes did not receive him, and they shunned him out. And uh, these are his uncles, his families uh, in Mecca. And because he tried to enforce Islam over uh, the uh the pagan, uh, uh, you know, religion and belief. And when he went to Medina, what happened is through his exodus from uh, one place to another, Medina is today, it's what referred to in English, Al-Qaeda, which is the first Al-Qaeda that was uh, birthed uh, in Islam. Muhammad right away, you know, he his message changed, and now Allah was speaking to him uh, radically, and so therefore what happened in Islam, it's called an nasikh wal mansukh, which is the abrogation, which is what Allah spoke to Muhammad before. Allah said to Muhammad, I have changed my mind, and I have given you something different and better from what I've given you before. And so therefore, what I'm giving you now overrides what's been spoken before and what I've commended you, because this is the better things I'm coming with right now. Mm-hmm. And this is the uh, the... the the dogma of uh, abrogation, and so Muhammad became a war leader, and then from war leader he became an occupier, and then from occupier he became an invader to different uh, nation to uh, change the world. Islam was enforced now no longer by reaching people by the message of hope, but it was by the sword of Islam. Uh, Kamal, could you tell us for a moment and summarize what does the Quran teach about who Jesus is, and what's the difference between the Islamic view of Jesus versus what the New Testament says? Well, uh, this is how we reach the Muslim. Many times when we are going to churches and we give seminars, we speak on this. Our, our desire is to teach the Christian to be a fisher of men, specifically how to reach the Muslims. And uh, what I mean by that is, when you know, the Word of God says, uh, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And many people have refused the knowledge because the knowledge right there in the Quran, it speaks that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God, but he was one of the prophets. And even now, the Muslims are waiting for his coming back. But in his coming back, they believe that he will break the uh, break the cross and he will will destroy will slaughter the Jews so he will destroy the Christians and Jews when he comes back but nevertheless the Quran says that he is uh, he's the only one that never sinned Jesus Christ the mm-hmm. son of Mary that never sinned never committed adultery never been married and he's the only one that the spirit of Allah the spirit of God came from heaven and went into Virgin Mary and impregnated her so she was pregnant uh, by the spirit you know uh, of Allah and then what happened is the Quran speak that Jesus Christ you know is what so called Kalimatullah which is the word of God and 
declares also that Jesus was not, he did not die, but he was lifted up like Elijah. You know, God did not kill him, but put Judas in his place, you know, on the cross. Mm. And they believe that he sit with God right now, and they believe that he will come back from God, and they will believe at the end of time he will judge humanity with God himself. He will sit next to God and judge humanity, but they believe he's a Muslim. He does not believe because... Uh, the the Quran dictates it says all the prophets were Muslims from Adam and Eve from Adam all the way to Muhammad all of them were Muslim but the Jews and the Christian perverted it Wow that's, that's so we, we reach them through their word you know if, if right. Jesus Christ came from God mm -hmm. if he was born by the Spirit of God and he's sitting with God and he will judge humanity and he would never committed adultery or murder and his holy and so, and he's alive and he's not dead, while all the other prophets, all other gods are dead, well, he's alive today, shouldn't we be following a true living God? Yeah, that's great.